Welcome once again to the Transforming Assessment webinar series. This session is about effective electronic feedback to students and it will look at particularly things like uh, open text automatic feedback systems. The presenter today is uh, Dr. Denise Wetlock from the Open University in the UK. The date today is 2nd of December 2010. Um, I will now hand you over to Denise who will begin our session. Okay, well, good afternoon everyone. It's a very early start for me here in the UK and it's snowing like crazy. We've got the coldest sort of early December that we've ever had. Anyway, welcome. And I'd like to share my thoughts with you today on what I've been doing and what we've been trying to think about, about feedback in the Open University. So, Here's an outline of the um, talk. So I want to really start with thinking about interactivity and feedback, because what are we giving feedback on is important. How effective it will be will be involved with the sort of teaching and pedagogy, which all ties back to learning design. And then we've got the promise of Web2 tools, which are, are, are doing really well, I think, at the moment. but how do we use the Web2 tools, which are all about collaboration, and how can we do that with collaborative feedback and support one another? Automated feedback, I think, is important because we need to get to terms with free text entry and help students uh, to um, phrase their own responses and to give them some automated feedback. And then how can we support tutors? So Open Mentor, I'm going to talk about Open Mentor, a system I built with folk at, in Aberdeen about how to assist uh, tutors. And then to come back to um, what I'm thinking about at the moment, which is instead of calling the term feedback, what I'm thinking about now is advice for action. So that's the, um, uh, the way I'm going to uh, present this morning. First of all, let me ask you all a question. Um, and I want you to put your hands up. I'm going to ask you about your, you know, your theoretical position in, in your pedagogy. How many of you would say you were behaviorist? Okay, how many would say you were constructivist? You've got one. How many would say uh, you are, um, you know, postmodernist? So, a bit of a mix, but really on the uh, constructivist side. So, let's move on and see what I, I think is going on with what the challenge is with the assessment. I think we've got a big constructivist learning is learning push, which we can see in, in our Web2 tools. And for assessment, we've really got the, you know, importantly, and we, we can't, um, you know, downgrade this, that we've got to have institutional re reliability and accountability because we are giving people quotations. So here's the tension that we've got. And I think also that we can't neglect the human response to assessment and feedback. I can remember when I first received um, feedback on the, on the paper, the first paper I submitted to a journal, and I thought the feedback was dreadful. I felt quite sort of emotional about it. And then I showed it to uh, my professor, who said, well, this is wonderful, Denise. There's only a few little corrections. And I thought it was the end of the world. So, you know, we, we shouldn't forget about the human reaction and to emphasize that point here's some work that Chris McKillop did when she was looking about people's reaction to assessment she asked them to write stories um, about their experiences which didn't work very well but when she asked them to draw diagrams she got things like this and this 
And so assessment, you know, is seen as a big hill, a big mountain to climb. The goal's worth it, but it, you know, there's a lot of pain on the way. So I think my thesis is saying, well, okay, you know, we're doing very well with um, constructivism as it is at the moment, Web2 tools, but with assessment, I think we've got a wolf in sheep's clothing. Now in the UK, and I guess where you are too, students really want more support with assessment. And in the UK, we've got this National Student Survey. And part of that, some of the questions are about feedback and assessment. And all vice chancellors are becoming very, very concerned about the feedback they're giving to students because of their rankings on the National Student Survey, which affects their, <coughs> their recruitment, etc. But students do want more feedback. They want quicker feedback. They want fuller feedback and user-friendly feedback. So how are we going to deal with that? And I think from a tutor's point of view, there are all sorts of problems with feedback. I mean, tutors say that the students ignore the feedback. They look at the mark only. And students are concerned with some of the surveys that I've done that um, you can tell me the correct solution, especially in math and in science, but I don't really understand what's wrong with mine. I don't see where the error is. And as Sadler says, you know, and Bode, that feedback needs decoding, and of course it needs to be timely. You know that yourself, you know, when you get feedback on a journal article or whatever, and it's months later, you know, why did I write this? What does it all mean? Getting yourself back into it can be quite a struggle. So what I wanted to start off with was, is to think about what sorts of tasks which incorporate feedback assist learning. And we've been doing, I've gone too far, sorry, it's gone too quickly, but it doesn't matter. Here's, here's one of the tasks that I'm going to talk about. But first of all, really what I want to say is that in the science and um, interactive tasks that we've been building, um, for students to work alone with, and now some collaboratively, that we have a Tel Explore check modus operandi, and what the students have to do, and it's, it's well tried and tested in science, is to predict, look, and explain. But what we want them to do is enter the discourse of a subject via audio feedback because they are distant students. And what we've done here is we've offered some sort of multiple guest questions, which are much more complicated than just very simple tick the box. And um, these have been in biology, where they've been talking about evolution. And what's happened, what we've done with the audio feedback is we've actually recorded the tutor explaining why the correct option, the one out of the four, was correct and why, and why the others were incorrect. And if you think you're in a tutorial, the tutor will probably just explain which one is correct, but not go through why all the others are incorrect and why. And also, I think that it's just we're concerned about um, students who are at a distance actually coming and understanding how to talk about their domain, not just write about it. And so we're giving a lot of scaffolded text feedback as well with three goes so that you get uh, two chances to answer, and you get some hints, and on the third go, there's a show me button, and you're actually told what the answer is, so you're not struggling forever and ever. Let's have a look at one of these tasks, which is actually a game, and it's the carbon cycle, and I'm going to have to go back one again. Here we are. If you have a look in the top left-hand corner, you see a big black ball, which is supposed to be the carbon atom. And the idea is that the students have to um, put the carbon atom into the right reservoir, because this is the carbon cycle we're talking about. 
So if you want to go from the carbon that's in the air into the trees, then we've got to be able to explain and clock up that this is photosynthesis. And that if you want to get um, carbon from the animal, the fox there, then you're going to have respiration. And so there's going to be um, a move from oxygen from here, a carbon dioxide rather, to the atmosphere, etc. So you've got to get into the different reservoirs. And that's the sort of game area. And, but you've got a lot of help as well. So you can actually go into and find out about the reservoirs. For example, carbonate rock. And there's also a quiz that helps you as you go along. The thing is, if you're going to invest in this type of electronic in interactivity, it, it's costly, but does it pay off? And when I was actually doing this work, I looked at a number of uh, these sessions that we've, we've built these, these, uh, in different domains, in chemistry, in um, earth science, biology, and the programs are named at the bottom of this graph, Galapagos, Organic Molecules, Meiosis, and Mitosis, and Seismic Waves. And you can see there that where there was a lack of interactivity in one of the programs, there was less cognitive change or less learning. So I think interactivity is important. Sorry, I'm waiting for the slide. And we've used games, we've used simulations, we've used, um, more importantly, I think, what, what we've done is make the abstract concrete, especially in science. And to do this, we've even built a quark machine, which is rather like um, uh, a, a gambling machine, you know, one-armed bandit, to make predictions for things to come up for students to try and understand what's going in the, the, on in the micro world of atoms. And for mitosis meiosis, which we improved, we got students to direct a sequence of actions. And so trying to make the concrete, ab making the abstract at the forefront of the interactivity. And when we're talking about these sorts of tasks, I think we're really talking about formative assessment. And we know that from the Black and Williams seminal study that you know this mean effect size of 0.4 to 0.7 improvement on standardized tests is really big. And it's really what is old fashioned teaching. You know, you do something and you get some feedback on it. And we find that we can keep students to time scale and motivate them. Obviously we don't want dropouts. And more importantly though, how can we support our students to become more reflective learners and enter a digital discourse. And that's what I'm trying to think about at the moment. Now, I should be actually pushing this on. Oh, here we go. Here's an example. I did some case studies for the, for the GISC on e-assessment. And, um, when you've got advice for action, when you've got good feedback, um, you'll find that pedagogy changes as well. There's an example here of students on a chef's course in a, a, a catering college, and they were using e-portfolios, their cameras, to their phone cameras to send information back to the tutor. And um, what they were doing here because these students have trouble writing, they were actually sending back the pictures and the tutor was using what they were doing and changing the lessons when they got back into class because he was building on what they